Alan, I just poured my soy candles and they looked really, really good. But then a few hours later, once the wax hardened, the top is all rough and bumpy and I don't know what I did wrong. Hello everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. On this channel, I share tips and tricks on how to make quality candles coming for someone with a background in chemistry. So if you're new, subscribe, it's totally free and tap the little bell in the corner and I will let you know each time I post a new video so that you don't miss out. Now, this is a very, 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 very common question that I get, particularly for people who are working with pure soy wax. Now, I put pure in air quotes because there's really no such thing as pure soy wax. Most soy waxes, even like soy uh, 464, uh, they contain a number of different soy based additives and also the wax itself doesn't start out in a solid state so it has to be hydrogenated in order to form a solid. That's a whole other story for a whole other day. But this video is kind of talking about if you are using one of those waxes like soy 464, soy 444, soy 415 um, and then blended wax has a number of different ones as well and then uh, Cargill has a number of different ones like C3. These are what are, would be considered by most pure soy waxes and the problem is that the crystalline structure on the molecular level is what you call polymorphic and so what that means is as the wax solidifies from liquid so when you first pour those candles that wax is liquid and then it gradually becomes solid the soy wax crystallizes in response to temperature changes and all those little kind of bumps that you see on the surface are actually crystals in the wax. If you were to look at it at a molecular level, um, you would see how the wax, the structure of the wax molecules is not very uniform in soy wax, in pure soy wax. And that's one of the reasons why uh, actually a lot of candle makers choose to use soy blends or even soy waxes that are almost a complete soy like CB2 and like uh, soy 10 and um, Mixi has a number of different ones as well where they contain a minuscule amount of food grade paraffin that kind of helps to stabilize that soy wax because the soy wax on its own is very unstable at the molecular level. And so when you're pouring your candles uh, made with pure soy wax, generally speaking, the more time that that wax has to go from liquid to solid when it's in your container, the more crystals, in other words, bumpy, rough, pitted tops are going to form. Now, this is just one cause. Another cause can be if you use too much dye or if uh, say you're using too much fragrance oil, I would recommend no more than uh, definitely 10%, but usually somewhere between eight and 9%. Uh, when I made candles with 464 soy for a number of years, I did tend to use like 10% fragrance, um, but I will say that that would be like the absolute max that you'd ever wanna use. And even then I would say that's really on the high end, um, but a lot of people do choose to use that with 464 soy because you know it can sometimes lead to a stronger hot throw. So if you heat your soy wax to 100 185 Fahrenheit, which is what most suppliers will tell you to do, um, because that is the temperature at which those wax molecules are fully expanded and will bind best to the fragrance oil molecules. Um, that is the temperature at which uh, sort of the crystals will begin forming. So if you were to add your fragrance at that temperature and stir for two minutes, like I recommend for most all pure soy waxes and most suppliers will recommend as well, and then you go ahead and pour that candle right away, um, that temperature is going to be quite high. I would say it's probably, if you're adding your fragrance at 185, stirring for two minutes and then pouring right away, you're probably pouring at like 160. And that is simply too high in my opinion. Um, you're going to be much more likely to get these bumpy tops if you pour at that high of a temperature, because think about it, these crystals begin forming um, as soon as you pour your candle and they, re they form in response to temperature. So if you pour that candle at a lower temperature, there's going to be less time for those crystals to form. So I recommend if you're using 464, 444, 415, some of the Cargill Pure Soys or the Blended Wax Pure Soys or any other wax that markets itself as Pure Soy. I, I think there's even some by Freedom Wax available on Amazon, but these waxes you're going to wanna pour at a much lower temperature. I would recommend anywhere between 135 Fahrenheit to 145 Fahrenheit uh, as your pouring temperature because if you go too much lower than that the wax is going to start uh, kind of beginning to solidify and you don't really want that either. 
Now, we've talked about kind of the bumpy pitted tops that you get when you pour your candles, but this same inconsistent crystalline structure is also what's going to be responsible for the bumpy tops that you get after you burn your candles. And there's absolutely nothing you can do to prevent this. Absolutely nothing. Um, and customers, I would recommend just putting it into your branding. If you're really wanting to use one of these waxes, um, have it somewhere in your brand statement that I've heard people describe it as the blooming of a pure soy wax, um, and, and that's how you can tell if it is a pure soy wax. Again, I put that in air quotes because just on a chemistry level, that really isn't true. Um, soy wax is hydrogenated to become soy wax and also there's a number of additives that are that are used. Now in something like 415 soy, there really aren't nearly as many of these additives, but then that wax has additional other problems why I would not recommend using it. Um, but just say you want to use a pure soy wax um, and, and we're going to, for, for simplicity's sake, call these that. Um, I would put this in your branding in some way that the wax blooms um, and or again I've heard it described that way or that the wax uh, you know the kind of bumpy tops is an indication that it is a pure soy wax make it part of your brand so that customers are not surprised um, I sold candles with soy uh, 464 for like two three years and made sure that my customers were aware that it wasn't something that they were doing wrong. It was just a feature of uh, this type of soy wax. And so I never had one customer really complain about it. Now, I didn't like other things about that wax. And I'll kind of link my video above as well as to why I no longer use 464 soy because the inconsistent crystalline structure of soy waxes when they're on their own or predominantly on their own with really just other soy based additives makes them very, very, very inconsistent in a number of different areas. Not just the uh, pitted tops, but this is also where frosting comes from. This very same uh, irregular crystalline structure on the molecular level. And also um, part of why, in my opinion, they don't throw fragrance as well because the way that they trap the fragrance molecules um, it, it can be almost exceedingly difficult for them to actually release. And that's part of why soy candles have an exceptional cold throw. And part of why when we use parasoy waxes and we blend paraffin and soy together, um, that is kind of the best of both worlds because we're getting that exceptional cold throw from the soy wax, which is excellent at kind of trapping that fragrance in, but it really has difficulty releasing that fragrance. And that's where uh, paraffin wax and coconut wax uh, really do sing, paraffin more so than coconut. But um, in terms of producing that hot throw because they really optimize the release of the fragrance into the room where soy wax really optimizes the trapping of the fragrance into the container. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it provided a little bit of insight. Again, I'll link my video as to why I personally don't use 464 soy anymore, but this is just my uh, opinion and things that have uh, just kind of come about in my own candle making and personal reasons as to why I decided not use that wax. but. I will say that I do still use it in my beeswax soy cocoa cream blend, and that is actually a blend of three different waxes, and those other two waxes do help to stabilize the soy wax. So for example, if you made a candle with my beeswax soy and cocoa cream blend, even though you're making a candle about 66% uh, 464 soy, that kind of 19 or so percent beeswax and 11 or so percent coconut oil really help to stabilize that soy wax so that you will never see frosting, bumpy tops, uh, or kind of some of those features that you would be much more likely to get with soy wax. Now, it still will really struggle with hot throw with a number of fragrance oils like most predominant soy blends will. Um, however, it doesn't have those other features um, that we really don't like with soy waxes. Anyways, that was kind of long-winded, but if you guys did enjoy this one, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below if you have any questions at all. I'm happy to try to answer as many of them as I can. And this is a topic that is um, very, very, very common. I get so many questions on why is my soy wax? You know, what am I doing wrong in my candle making? It's nothing you're doing wrong in your candle making usually, but you can oftentimes pour at a cooler temperature to mitigate some of this initially. But then, you know, in terms of after you burn the candle and light it and reheats again and then re-solidifies again, the polymorphic nature of soy wax um, when it's on its own is just just going to be prone to this uh, bumpy kind of uh, frosted tops and all this irregular uh, crystalline latticing is what it's really called. Um, so anyways, guys, uh, I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light, and wishing all of you happy candle making. I'd like to take the time to thank my patrons for their incredible support. Live.
living authentic do more exploring a deeper than knowing just what is essential for life that is thriving go at all costs and never lose your spark because that's what makes your brand uniquely you. I'm rooting for you and I know you have what it takes to be successful and to have fun with this craft. Until next time, happy candle making.